So Dave, welcome back to our journey through the creed. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Thank yeah? you. Yeah. You had a good week? It was a pretty good week. Yeah, pretty good. Me too. Me too. Um, so uh, as you know, this series is that we're digging deep into what the creed states and what we believe as Catholics. And today we're going to begin with our very first article, which is, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We say that with confidence every Sunday, right? So the creed starts with, I believe in God. And if we know God exists and even some things about him by reason, why do we assert that we believe in God? Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, divine revelation confirms what reason can tell us. So uh -huh. it's not like it's not in divine revelation. Mm -hmm. But notice this. We don't say that I believe that God exists. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. We also don't say, I believe in gods. And that's important because in the Roman world, just about everybody was polytheistic with the exception of the Jews. Mm -hmm. So this is a key aspect of the faith. It's not, we're not saying that I, I believe that God exists. We're also not saying that I believe there's more than one God. We're saying, I believe in God. And in particular, the Nicene Creed expands on this and adds the word one. I believe in one God, mm -hmm. the Father Almighty. That wasn't in the Apostles' Creed. This is one of those areas that that word is added in, probably to respond to the heresy of Martian. Right. So the Martianite heresy that believed there was a good God and a bad God. Um, but nonetheless, for whatever reason it was added, it mm. specifies that it's one God. We I, believe bet, I bet it was pretty dangerous and controversial yes, in the of Roman course. world. Yeah, right? because the minute you <laughs> profess, I believe in one God, right. you're saying, and it's not the gods of Rome. Mm -hmm. And in particular, it's not the emperor who was regarded as a God. You're in pretty deep water right from the get-go. Right. So the first article mentions God as the creator and the father. Uh, can you get into these two components a bit? I know that you think there's a bit of a tension between those two words. Uh, there's also a controversy around the word father yeah. as God. Uh, so I explain. Let's get into this a bit. Sure. So let's start with creator. I think before we can begin to really talk about who God is mm. as Father, we need to discuss what God is. What do we mean when we say the word God? And in the creed, when we say, I believe in one God, what is this God we profess? Mm -hmm. That's a very, very important starting point. If we don't get that right, we're going to get a lot wrong. A small error in the beginning causes a big problem later on. If anyone's ever tried to build a fence, you learn that very quickly. So, what do we mean by the word God? There was a scholar of religion in the 20th century by the name of Rudolf Otto, and he defined God as if you could define God, but he defined God as mysterium tremendum et fascinans, a mystery at once terrifying and fascinating. And this wow. is a pretty powerful statement because I don't think any of us really think about what we mean by God. What do we mean when we say that God is infinite, eternal, all holy, not just a being, but, but being itself? What do we mean when we say that God created the world? What is the creature? in respect to the Creator. What do we mean when we say that God holds all things in being right now? That nothing that is could exist right now if God weren't positively willing its existence. I don't think we think about those things very much. It's a big, it's a big thought. So it's interesting, God is a mystery which means not that we can't say anything about God, but that what we can say about God always pales in comparison to the reality mm -hmm. that is God. But he's a mystery at once, terrifying and fascinating. What, what are the responses to the God 
who is Mysterium Tremendum et Fascinans, fear and awe. Mm -hmm. And if you read the scriptures, this is all over the scriptures, and not just the Old Testament, by the way. So there are those who might say, oh, the Old Testament God's that big, scary God you should fear, and the New Testament God's the really close, like, God that wants a relationship with you and loves you and is like a dad. Mm -hmm. But that would be, I think, a gross generalization. There's plenty of terrifying images of God in the New Testament and plenty of very comforting ones in the Old. No, God is, in the Scriptures, clearly one to be feared because of who God is in respect to who we are. Another scholar of religion of the 20th century, Mircea Eliade, talks about God as the one who is wholly other, as if to emphasize that God is is so unlike anything in the created universe that there is such a vast gulf between what it means to be creator and creature that that, that gulf is almost uncrossable. Mm. So one way in which I try to kind of bring this home is imagine yourself in a place where there's not a lot of artificial light. Have you ever traveled anywhere where there's not a lot of ar artificial light, maybe uh, in the country, um, maybe on a crisp, cool night, and you look up at the stars, you know, what's your experience? Like, it's, wow, there's a lot of stars. Not like living by New York City, right. where you see, like, a few stars, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But when you go into the country, it's like, wow, there's way more stars than I thought there were, because right. you can see them. Right. Well, the closest star is the sun. That's 93 million miles away. That's crazy talk. I don't even know what that looks like, effectively. Yeah. I mean, around the Earth is 8,000 miles. And that's crazy to comprehend. The second closest star to us is 1.1 trillion miles away. So if I couldn't get 93 million, what about 1.1 trillion? And then think about the difference in distance between the closest and next closest star. I mean, between 93 million and 1.1 trillion is like a crazy distance. Those stars aren't anywhere near each other. And then you look up at that sky and you see all those stars Stars that, by the way, we're seeing now, some of them, but they don't exist anymore because it takes so long for their light to get to us that they've already right. died out. So, like, yeah. what am I in respect to the universe? I'm... A speck. Yeah, nothing. Nothing, yeah. Okay, so God is infinitely greater than the universe. The universe is a creature of God. The gulf between creature and creator is so vast as to be almost incomprehensible, and yet I'm a speck with regards to the universe. What am I with respect to God? Mm. That's what it means to be God. Right. Puts things in perspective. Now, there was an interesting conversation that was had recently that Jordan Peterson was part of, and somebody talked about you know, believing in God and Jordan Peterson said something to the effect of, I mean, seriously, do any of us really believe in God? I mean, really? Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting question. Not that he doesn't believe in God. I think what he was drawing out is when we really think about what we mean by God, none of us really act like that God really exists. You know, because if we did, we would live in a very different way. You know, what, what would that mean for my life? That <laughs> That's the God that exists. One of the things that I think should come to our mind when we're considering the vast difference between what it means to be creature and what it means to be creator, that in the great scheme of the universe, we're a speck of dust, so what are we in comparison to God? Is think about what sin is. Sin is us, proverbially a speck of dust, mm -hmm. telling God, greater than the universe, infinite, almighty, eternal, that we're in charge. Mm. Claiming for ourselves the power and authority that only God has. It's the ultimate in silliness when you think about it. Sin is the, the stupidest thing on earth. The speck of dust telling the God that's greater than the universe, nah, I'm going to do it my way. Right. I got it. You know, I don't need you. 
I don't need your law. And so look at what disobedience to God's law even looks like in virtue of that. It seems like the supreme silliness, really. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's a very important starting point. Yeah. God is the creator and source of all that is. He holds everything in being. There is nothing that exists that doesn't receive its existence from God as first cause and final cause. Yeah. So I think that this is uh, something that many people don't consider, yeah. but it's, I think, an important place yeah, to, that's to good. begin. So we talked about what God is, right? But what do we mean about God being the creator? Okay, so I think we have to make a distinction between creating and making. When we talk about God creating, we mean he creates, in Latin it's ex nihilo, from nothing. Mm. Making is creating from stuff that already is, maybe putting it together in different configurations. But when we mean God is the creator, we mean he creates from nothing, that there was nothing, mm. and then something. That's a very important point, because logically speaking, from nothing, only nothing can come. Like, so when people talk about, well, once there was nothing, it's almost like they're proving there must be a God. Because if there was nothing at some point, there would still be nothing. But it's the fact that there was nothing at some point, which means God must exist. Because only God can bring something out of nothing. <laughs> right? It sounds funny, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you got to wrap your mind around that a little bit. Right. So I think that that's a key point. Right. And then when we talk about the first article of the creed, we say, creator of heaven and earth. Now, earth actually is not just like the physical world, earth. Earth refers to all things that are material. And heaven doesn't refer to the heavens like the solar system. It refers to the heavenly, mm -hmm. meaning all things spiritual. This is why in the Nicene Creed, what is added is another qualification. All things visible and invisible. Visible meaning the material world, invisible meaning the spiritual. Right, makes sense. Good, good. Very good. So the spiritual world would include, for example, angels, mm. which we're not going to get into, but nevertheless, that's the kind yeah, that's of a whole other thing. Angels are creations of God. Yeah. He brought them into existence from nothing. Mm. So it's awesome. Well, we didn't get to God the Father, but we'll we'll come back to that in the next episode. Yeah, I think that deserves its own yeah. treatment. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great. Thanks for hanging and uh, we'll get back to you next time. Awesome.